Our job begins where most advisors stop. Saving money is great, but how do you spend it without risk in retirement? Welcome to Every Day is Saturday with Brad Gatto and Matt Stahl, partners and private wealth managers at Fiat Wealth Management. In this podcast, we aim to broaden your knowledge about the financial world we live in today and make the boring and complex financial decisions fun, informative, and educational. Join us on this journey where Brad and Matt will explore different strategies on how to spend your money without guilt and have peace of mind knowing you are spending it the optimal way in retirement. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Every Day is Saturday. I'm Brad Gatto, and normally I am co-hosted with Matt Stahl, my business partner. He's not here today, but I do have a special guest with me, Courtney Millard. Courtney, welcome to your first ever episode of Every Day is Saturday. Hey, thanks. I'm just as good as Matt Stahl. Probably better. In fact, he may never get on this podcast ever again. (laughs) (laughs) I had a family thing come up today. Uh, and for, he's got four kids. I think if you've listened to all of our episodes, you probably know that. But one of his kids got in a, a little bit of an accident snowboarding. I think he's okay, but they did have to go to the hospital and kind of check him out. So that's where Matt is at. So we have Courtney today, but we always planned on having Courtney today, actually. I didn't know if she was going to be a co-host, but she was going to be a guest because today's episode of Everyday is Saturday is actually, who is Courtney Millard and what in the world does she do for Fiat Wealth Management? So Courtney... Why don't you just tell all of our viewers, our listeners, who you are? Well, I'm still figuring that out, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're not going to get that deep, but how, well, let's start with your personal life. So tell us about your family, where you live, all mm-hmm. the, all kind of the fun details. Yeah. Well, I am married to my college sweetheart, Drew, and we've been married for 17 years. We have three children, Lucia, who is 14. Lila, who is 11, and Ledger, who is seven. And I do get asked a lot if I plan to name them all L names. And the truth is yes and no, because no, I did not intend to name all three of my children L names at first, but that's kind of how it went. And of course, when Ledger came along, we had to give him an L name. So he would be. So when the, the middle, when I see, I didn't know this, when Lila was born, the intention wasn't that, but then because she became a Lila, then it had to be. Well, she would have either been, we knew we were having a girl. She would have either been Lila or Ren. And because she was born prematurely, we named her Lila because she's named after my dad, Lyle. Mm. And it just felt like we needed, it was just kind of an intense situation. Sure. So we were like, let's go with Lila, which is linked to our family. Yeah, so that makes sense. Yeah. So. Three kids, married. Where do you live? We live in Delano. And don't forget about Duke, our black lab, who everyone <laughs> thinks I tend to forget about. But he's there, too. Yep, we live in Delano. And um, all three this is where kids. I live. Yep. And we go to the same church as Brad and Christy and their boys. And in fact, we're going to Mexico soon. We are together. Yeah. Like families together. Yeah, Brad brings his assistant on his vacation. And that's going to be <laughs> no surprise to anyone who knows you. Oh. <laughs> uh... So Duke, but from my understanding, there's going to be a Duke 2.0. Yeah. We're getting an additional dog, which makes no sense to any (laughs) logical thinking human being, but um, yeah, we're getting another lab in April. Congratulations or my condolences. I'm not really sure which one of those is is accurate, Mm -hmm. but either way, Courtney, you're on the podcast today, not just because you're a friend of mine, but you were a friend of mine first you're here because you're part of the Fiat team. And so why don't you tell everybody what it is exactly that you do? Well, (laughs) I like to keep a little air of mystery about that. I don't want anybody to really know what I do here so that there's low expectations. I don't want anybody expecting me to do too much. (laughs) So (laughs) I'm not really sure what I do here, but my title has changed many times. I do refer to myself as the mom of the office. So, you know, what typical moms do, just kind of take care of the family, buy groceries, clean up, invite friends over, host. Head head of HR. Head of HR, which um, when I offered my services for that, I thought that was going to be more touchy-feely, like let's talk about our feelings. And then Matt Stahl (laughs) made me be in charge of our benefits. And now Uh, taxes. He's trying to get me to do the taxes. Oh. I did not know that. 
Well, I mean, not do the taxes. We have an accountant. <laughs> Don't worry, you guys. Yeah. So of everybody that's worked at Fiat, you've probably worn more hats mm-hmm. than anybody else. What was when when you started at Fiat One, when did you start and what were you originally hired to do? I don't remember the year. It's like either two years ago or three years ago. It was end of 19. Okay. Nope. 18. I lied. 18, 2018. It was in October. I can't remember that. Yes, that's October my birth, of 18. First month. Yeah, I was only employed to work two days a month <laughs> to help Matt and Brad with taxes and retirement workshops. At that time, we were doing them live in person. Yep. And then as those started to take off, Matt and Brad asked me to work some hours in the office, which I begrudgingly agreed to. <laughs> and then they said, could you work even more hours in the office? And I said, I guess. And then cut to moving to this office. And Brad, being a friend of mine, said, your youngest is going to school so you can start working more hours. <laughs> See, it was a slow bleed. I knew I was going to get you out <laughs> of you know home life and back into the workforce yeah. by just asking you to work basically you're not full time, but you're here four days a week, all in one fell swoop. So it was always part of the master plan. We'll get you mm-hmm. a couple of days a month, a couple of days a week, and now, right. now here you are, and you're head of HR, and <laughs> now evidently have tax duties as well. Let alone master of ceremonies when it comes to all the events that we do here at Fiat, making sure that all of us stay hydrated and fed in the office, pay bills, run bank account stuff. Like there's really not a lot that you don't have a hand in here. At Fiat. So I don't know what the, the best title for that would be, but let's just say this on the one day a week that you're not here on Fridays, it's felt. <laughs> <laughs> we know in a lot of different areas. And so that's it. Going back to the very beginning in 2018, you started two days a month, and your job well, at that time was to just travel around with Matt and I as we're doing these live workshops and kind of run our registration desk and take in forms and that kind of deal. And then when we first started kind of asking you to expand Mm -hmm. your roles and responsibilities. What was your response? No, thank you. (laughs) Hard pass. (laughs) Not only did Courtney basically say no to everything in the beginning, I'm pretty sure you tried to quit about five or 600 times. Well, I was doing that for you though, (laughs) because I didn't think I was good at the job that I was doing and I didn't want Fiat to fail because of my inadequacy. And that was true. Like, I'm not just being humble. That was true to a, to a certain extent. Like what the jobs that I was doing at that time were not in my skill set, And so it was not successful. Let's put it that way. It was not successful. And so when some of those jobs went away, I was able to use some of my actual skills. Sure. So two and a half, it's been more than that now, three and a half years later, what is your favorite part about your job working at FIA? Well, I love, I mean, I 100% believe in what we're doing here. So that at first, of course, I didn't know anything about finances. I don't deal with my own finances. My husband (laughs) does all of that. I don't do any of that. So it was all very overwhelming to me and seemed boring, but the truth is what we do here is help families. And so I can hundred percent get on board with that. I, and Brad and Matt told me all the time, you don't have to do the finances. So just let that go. We know you don't know about finances. That's okay. But just caring about people and not just our clients, but also the people that work in this office. And as our family here has continued to grow, that role has increased. Mm-hmm. And that's for sure. One of my favorite things is just caring about the family members of Fiat making sure everybody's happy on a holistic basis, not, I mean, healthy, I meant to say healthy, not happy, but on a holistic basis. And so that we can all be at our very best and living our best lives. <laughs> like very, that's a Courtneyism. <laughs> living our best lives here and at home. So. Yeah. So as a practical example of that, some of the things that you brought to the office are one, the Enneagram. Ooh, exciting. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk and about it. I don't know that we have enough time on this episode <laughs> of the podcast to, to go deep into Enneagram, but in a succinct way, mm. what, why do you have a passion for it? Why did you bring it to the Fiat office? And well, I love the Enneagram and anybody that wants to can check back and watch my inner circle workshop on the Enneagram. Yeah. Enneagram. 
co-hosted with the wonderful Jen Johnston, <laughs> but it's a, it's a personality typing system. And what's great about it is you learn about yourself, but you also learn about others. And one of the biggest lessons or takeaways is just that people are coming at each thing from their own point of view and recognizing that not everybody's coming at it from your point of view and that what makes sense to you might not make sense to someone else and vice versa. So it just brings us greater understanding of each other and increases our empathy and our compassion for each other. And I think we need a lot more of that. So you brought it to the fiat office because you didn't think that we were not fiat, like the world, <laughs> yeah. the world needs more of that. <laughs> uh, so I brought it to fiat because I, I, I loved the transformation that I saw in myself and even for my husband and I, in our relationship and just creating that understanding, it, it's, it's almost like a shared language. It mm-hmm. helps you communicate better. And so I thought that that would be important for our office too, because we're always striving to be a more cohesive unit. Yeah. One of the things we talk about all the time is, and I talk to families that we work with and prospective families that are thinking about partnering with our firm is that, you know, our industry throws this fiduciary word around a lot, which maybe three and a half years ago, you didn't know that term, but now you're very intimately aware of what that means. And the fact that we are obligated by law to do what's in family's best interest. And my thought is that, you know, obviously the, the, the spirit of the law is, is based on numbers, but behind that, can I really do what's in a family's best interest? If I don't genuinely care about them, if I don't understand them, I don't know what makes them tick because what drives the numbers is those things. Mm-hmm. Right. And so there's people that let their money control their life. And there's people that let their life control their money. And so things like the Enneagram have helped us understand on a deeper level and give space for people to be different. Absolutely. Right. Because at the end of the day, we're all very, very different. We make decisions differently. We feel differently about different things. And the best financial plan is going to come through, not just on the number side, but also on kind of that personality side. And what it's done here internally at Fiat is help us, you know, we all know our numbers now. Mm-hmm. I probably was the last one to really grab onto <laughs> Onto my number, which is three, three. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, it has given that space. So that's one thing. And another thing that you've brought to the office is, is a book club. So talk a little bit about that. Well, technically I'm going to give credit to Matt for that, because if you'll remember, I was not on board with the book club either. Fair, but you are driving it now. <laughs> yeah. Because Matt told me to, <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm happy to drive the book club. Everyone at, uh, not everyone at our office, but I would say everyone but me is a high achieving individual and likes to (laughs) better themselves on many levels, the advisors for sure. And I would say the rest of the support staff as well are really interested in learning, continuing to grow in their personal uh, journey, as well as their success. And all of that is rolled into it. So we have a lot of avid readers, chief among them being Matt Stahl, probably. Yeah. And I would say Andrew. Yeah. And Andrew, and Andrew. too. Well, and Juan. And Juan, yeah. I mean, we have a lot of readers. They like to read. <laughs> so Matt wanted to have a shared book. And the first book that he brought to the group was called, was it Essentialism? Or I think that was the first one we read. Habits? No, I think Essentialism was the first one we read. Anyways, I said no thanks to that because I'm not really into improving myself. I like to just <laughs> be content. I'm pretty happy where I'm at. And I told Matt that and he said, well, bad for you. So then I, then he told me I had to lead the discussion. (laughs) So anyways, I forced my book into there about the third book. I said, now, how about we read this book? One that I like, and maybe we're going to do a novel sometime. I hope not. (laughs) Well, maybe we are, Brad. I don't know. Anyways, we're just over here improving every day, including me. Even against my, (laughs) against my better judgment, I continue to improve, I guess. Well, at the end of the day, one of the reasons that we wanted to have you on the podcast is one, your self-proclaimed OG status. That's right. Number one. Right. And so when, <laughs> when Matt and I decided to start branching out the hire outside of a remote contract employee assistant, you were the first one. So your employee, W2 employee, number one of Fiat, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so you have to have the OG on so that everybody understands. Plus. There's 
you know, when you look at the the makeup of any company, whether they're, what are we, 13 people now? Mm-hmm. 13 person company or 1300 person company. There's people that have very kind of their roles kind of stay in a lane. They kind of do this one thing and they do it really, really well. And then there's the people that make that possible. The only reason that somebody has the ability to stay in their lane is because there's somebody else that's doing all the other things that make that possible. And so that's kind of what your role has evolved into here is just kind of make, you're kind of that, that glue that kind of makes everything stick together. It could be something as trivial as the dishes need to be done all the way to something very complex in running employee benefits and a lot of things in between. As many times as you've tried to tell us no in the past, or you've tried to quit in the past, you're still here three and a half years later. And I think joyfully doing all of those things and doing them all well. And so we just wanted to make sure that everybody in the everyday Saturday sphere, whether you're not watching us on YouTube, which is available if you didn't pick up on that already, or listening to the podcast that There's somebody behind the scenes that's making all this possible and all those little things that matter possible. And that's the OG, self-proclaimed OG, Courtney Millard. Yeah, here I am. So what is what we love to do at the end of these episodes where we get an opportunity to introduce our listeners and viewers to the team members at Fiat is what we call, what do we, the lightning round, I think we started calling this, Yeah. where we do five fast questions. You just got to answer with whatever comes to the top of mind. Yeah. I heard you guys arguing about this last time. Uh, <laughs> I think you should call it fast five. The fast five. Okay. Yeah. I, I like that. It's, it's, uh, it's got a better, it's quicker. Yeah. More sh- short and succinct. Okay. So we're going to do the fast five and we also never prepare the questions because that's just not fun. So mm-hmm. the five questions are going to be the first five questions that come to my head and they need to be the answers that just come to your head. Deal. Let's go. Okay. Question number one, what is your biggest fear in life? <laughs> is it public speaking? <laughs> tell that tell that statistic about public speaking. Number one fear of Americans is public speaking. Number two is death. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would like to be better at public speaking. So thanks for this opportunity. <laughs> You're welcome. See, <laughs> uh, question number two, if you could only, other than water, because we all need water. Yeah. If you could only drink one non-water drink for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, that's not fair. I need coffee and wine, Brad. <laughs> I said one. <sighs> Are you going to start your morning out right or end I the night? I know. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say wine. <laughs> I think I can get by without coffee. <laughs> uh, I love it. This does not count as a question, but just more of a follow-up. So, I mean, you chose wine. So, obviously, that... <laughs> What type of wine? Why are you a? Oh, you know, Sauvignon, I know, but Sauvignon don't. Blanc. And we were out to dinner with some friends over the weekend. And I asked the bartender if the Sauvignon Blanc was from New Zealand. And I have never been given the, you are the most pretentious person in this place. <laughs> look more than that guy gave me. <laughs> I was like, uh, I'm um, just checking. I guess I'll take whatever you have. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So question number three, if you got a million dollars right now, What's the first thing you would do? Oh, man. I think... Cash. No taxes have to be paid. Cash, cash no taxes. I, I mean, should I say I would gift it to my close friends and family? You shouldn't say anything. You already admitted <laughs> that wine would be your number one. So we're, we're on the truth oh, train no, here. I so don't... what is the first thing you would do? What's your gut reaction? <laughs> I would have to put some aside for my children because I'm a good mother. But then I think... I would probably do everything to my house that I want to do because a million dollars doesn't go very far. It's not like I would buy a new house. I think I would stay in my house, but I would have, I would hire somebody to come in and do all the little things like paint the trim and fix all the little things that never get fixed and have it look exactly the way. (laughs) Is this a tiny pot shot at your husband? No, he does. No, I'm (laughs) absolutely not. I'm the one that fights him on doing things more because I don't want him to spend his time doing that. (laughs) Fair. Dream vacation. I don't love any place that's super touristy. So uh, some friends of ours, some friends of yours, Mitch and Steph went to Croatia a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And ever since they went there, I thought that looks amazing. It's off the beaten path, beautiful scenery, a lot of hiking. I've never been to Europe. 
So I think that's where I would like to go. All right. That's it. It's not the answer I expected. Yeah. I've never been to Europe. So I'd also like to go to Norway. Norway. The home of my ancestors. (laughs) You don't look Norwegian at all. (laughs) (laughs) Or sound Norwegian. (sighs) Last question. If you could go to any concert, what, what, what concert would you go to? Well, Juan just got to go to Imagine Dragons and you know, I love them. Yes. That would be cool. I would love to see Chris Stapleton live. Mm. Yeah. He would be really good. That would be a good one. Well, that was the five. See, you got through it. Woo! Number one fear, public speaking. We went through an entire podcast. You didn't stumble over your words. I don't think he said, um, once. Yes. So I think he killed it. Oh man. I think this is a hidden talent. You and know? now we, now that we know you can do it, <laughs> you're going to be asked to do it again. I'll have to step in for Matt. <laughs> Courtney, we love having you at Fiat. We love having you part of the team. And like I said, there's certain team members that just really make everything work together. And that's what you are to our team here at Fiat. So thanks so much for sticking with us. Matt and I weren't going to let you quit. So thanks for sticking around. Can I say thanks for sticking with me? Yeah. No, I was (laughs) probably less than enthusiastic, but I'm really enthusiastic now, you guys. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Well, thanks for joining us on the podcast today, Courtney. Uh, And for everybody that's listening, thank you for listening to Every Day is Saturday. If you want to reach out to us here, you can find us on our website. It's www.fiatwm.com. And keep watching the website. We're actually in the works of putting a lot into the website, a redesign, more content. Just want to be able to deliver as much education and opportunities for you to learn all things financial. And so that's pretty exciting. So everything you want to get a hold of us, it's all out there. So with that said, the last thing I'm going to ask you to do is just subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast already, please do so. Share it with your family and friends so that they can enjoy us on this fun little ride as well. So I'm Brad Gatto. I'm here with not my business partner. I'm here with my not friend yet. and colleague, <laughs> Courtney Millard. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see all of you next Saturday. But Brad, we don't record the podcast on a Saturday. <laughs> We're not supposed to do that anymore. <laughs> Oh, Courtney. (laughs) Thank you for listening to Every Day is Saturday. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Fiat Wealth Management or Foundations Investment Advisors. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. Investment advisory services offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor.